Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is the Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? All right, so check this out. This is the Ryan Reese Show, but I got Sean McKeon in studio. I'm back. The infamous. So people always ask, like, where is he? <laughs> where are you? Why do you leave? Hey, man, I've got a lot of things going on right now. You know, I've, at the ministry at Golden Springs, there's just tons of stuff. Get up real early on Sunday mornings, and I teach on Friday nights, so there's just a lot of stuff going on. I've had some events, done a lot of funerals lately, and, uh, yeah, I've just been all over the place, and I kind of got to know what I, I got to do. So you've been holding it down. You've been having some cool guests come through in place. Yeah, man. It's, uh, you know, we always miss you up here. And, no, I love uh, doing you know, it. I like just talking trash, so... You know, uh, with you as we were earlier the, uh, today in the show, before right. the show. Yes. Um, we took a photo on Instagram. I'm actually looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I we did me too. Look. <laughs> so we put this filter on it. Looks pretty nice. But what's important is you look very skinny. I do in this photo, and this is what we were trying to accomplish. It's taken me over ten years to realize this because before I was just always skinny naturally. Yeah. But it's, Things have changed. They and, have. And because things have changed, <laughs> you have to know position. You put the skinnier guy in front of you, stand at an angle, push him a little bit more forward, and uh, it helps. See, Filters make you look tan, even though you're Irish and it's December. Yep. Got a little bit of a glow there. So I might be my screensaver, to tell you the truth. I, you look oh, very yeah, nice well. in that photo. So like, if you look, I am about a foot in front of you. <laughs> So, therefore, I cover half your chest and your belly. And, yeah, man, you're very, looking good right there. Very subtle. Very Perfect. subtle. But, yeah. And um, I, since it is tis the season to uh, – to, uh, it is, is, it is a, a, a season to eat a lot of pies and cakes. Cookies. And and, and this is why I have a baggy T-shirt on and a, <laughs> and a zip up unzipped to not show. Hey, I was at my dad's house um, – I've been at my dad's house. Yes. Staying there. We all know that. Mm -hmm. People have been listening to the show. And my dad bought a cheesecake. My dad's Pastor Raul Reese, in case you don't know. Uh, I bought, he bought a cheesecake at the house, and he's like, hey, who's going to eat the cheesecake? And so I ate two pieces, three pieces of cheesecake back to back. Boom, boom, boom. Um, what's what? it called? The Cheesecake Factory. Oh, you got it straight from there? Yeah. Wow. I know. It's the best. Three, three pieces? Three pieces. Right. Dude, straight up, went, it was actually last. I can only eat one of those. Last Saturday before the radio show, dude, I went to a sugar comb. I passed out. <laughs> My wife's like, dude, you just went and passed out, okay? <laughs> and then I woke up and I did the radio show. And then I went home and I ate two more pieces of cheesecake. <laughs> dude, I dusted half that cheesecake. Man. Anyway. Been trying to cut back on those carbs and that sugar ever since. No, not with, with your dad. Your dad loves it. I mean, he'll walk like what, like three or four um, he miles. He walks a lot. He walks a lot. A lot. Hills. I've walked Hills. with him before. I was like, "What are you trying to do? You're trying to kill me?" All the way that he walks. No, dude. He literally he exercises like crazy, he and does. then he comes home and eats his ice, gets his ice cream on. <laughs> he, he eats ice cream. I can eat whatever I want because I walk all the time. Exactly. So he tells me the same thing. Exactly. That's what he's doing. All right, so enough. See, that's why I like having you on the show. Yeah, because we can up. we can talk about our insecurities. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give the number out because we're live. We are live tonight. The number is triple eight five six four six one seven three, triple eight five six four six one seven three. We're taking calls on any subject. Every question. Is a good question. So I have a couple questions that came in online. So we'll start with a couple of those questions. And then uh, we'll just start taking calls as uh, the calls start coming in. Here is the number, 888-564-6173, 888 We already got some calls coming in from Texas. Right on, right on. All right. So uh, what questions do we have? Have you have you looked at any of yeah, these? Why don't I've we just start from the top? Let's do it. So you want to you want to do the first one here, unless you got anything special here. How about the second one? I, I think that one's a good one. I think that kind of can like set the tone a little bit. It says, with everything that's going on in the world, 
do you think that the United States is becoming like Sodom and Gomorrah? So when, if, for those that do not know the Bible, um, in the book of Genesis, uh, there became a time where Lot, which was Abraham's um, nephew, was in the city called Sodom. Sodom and Gomorrah was a place that he lived, and it was it showed moral decay, so much so that homosexuality, sexuality as a whole, was infiltrating the culture in such a way that God was going to judge, and he warned that judgment was going to come. And when that area became so sexual, uh, immoral, and immorality as a whole, they were ripe for judgment. So and, I have a, Go ahead. I have a question yeah. for you. So we're, we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Obviously, that's where the word sodomy came from and all that stuff. Yeah. Now, um, like how bad was it there? Because, I mean— Homosexuality is is it's been a thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very trendy now. Mm -hmm. um, we you know we have so many different versions of of the the rainbow now. Mm -hmm. You know, pansexual, transgender. We talked about all this stuff on the show before. But I mean, like, I'm just like thinking, like, dude, how bad, how crazy was this for, um, for God to want to come down and judge, like. Are we? I know when you go into like inner cities, especially like Hollywood and different places, it gets real. Um, I think Hollywood would be certain parts of Hollywood would be would be the closest to like, like West Hollywood, yeah. like is is or like San Francisco, in in, in that one area in San Francisco, uh, you know, very like the huge gay community. So either San Francisco mm -hmm. or West Hollywood. I think San Francisco probably more. But anyway, um, you know, this stuff's been happening a long time. It's not like it just happened. No. I don't. I don't think it hasn't just like got crazier. It's been. It's just more mainstream now, mm -hmm. across the board. But anyway, back to your question: Is the U.S. becoming? It's been. I mean, if if you want to say with homosexuality, it's been like West Hollywood's been like that for years. Mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco's been like that for years, you know. And then as far as like mainstream with homosexuality growing, it's like you know with young people, it's worldwide. Yeah, you know. So. Anyway. Yeah, so the thing when you look at Sodom and Gomorrah, the, you, this is what you have to realize. God is a graceful God. He is merciful. He is loving. Um, but he's also just and he's also righteous and he will judge. Um, what? It, how do we know how bad it was at that time? Well, we know how bad it was because when God was about to judge, uh, Abraham tried to intercede on their behalf, which just means that he was just praying, Lord, don't judge them. Have mercy upon them. Um but he's and Abraham even started this conversation. What if there is 50 righteous people there? Won't you spare that? And the Lord says, if there is 50, I would spare it. And then he goes, how about 40? How about 30? How about 20? How about 10? And he went through all of that. But there was not any that were not morally corrupt that stood there. And what God did was that he judged at that particular time. He only allowed Lot and his, his daughters to come out, and even his wife was impacted by the world because as they came out before judgment, she turned back. The Bible says that she turned into a, a pillar of salt, and Sodom and Gomorrah was completely destroyed. So when you hear that term like fire and brimstone, that's what came down upon the, the Sodom and Gomorrah. It was totally, totally destroyed. And so people asked a question. Now, earlier um, in the book of Genesis, where it shows the, the days of Noah, similar thing, but it was even more widespread. Before the flood came, it says that every thought and intent of, and intent of man's heart was completely wicked, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. And God adjudged, and we know that the, the eight that were able to survive at that particular time. And so, I yes, I would say, I think many would agree that we are looking at our nation, we're looking at the world right now that is definitely right for judgment mm -hmm. and that's why we pray and that's why we're here we're, we're praying and have god have mercy upon this nation mm -hmm. god have mercy upon this world we want people to be set free from the bondage of sin and so yeah i would definitely say that we're living in very incredible times i i think that the moral decay is just ramping up and i truly believe it's going to get worse and i'm glad you said that because i don't want to just focus on focus on homosexuality yes um i want to focus on sin at large yep. i mean we got the whole thing going on with pornhub right now where um they mastercard and visa sh stopped um you can't use mastercard or visa on the porn website pornhub which is the largest uh website because they got busted for i don't know how many millions of 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 uh uh, videos of underage women no 
kids. Yep, kids. Underage kids on that website. And it's under amateur porn or and whatever. It, it makes a, so much money. It's pedophilia, basically. Yeah. Pedophilia was on their website. So you got that. And we're, when I talk about, when we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, we're going to just talk about just the sickness of, of sexuality and all this crazy stuff that's going on. Yeah. So you got Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm-hmm. You got Teen Challenge. We've talked about this before. They are pushing some crazy agendas. Teen Challenge? You mean Teen Oh, sorry. Vogue. <laughs> teen <laughs> Teen, uh, teen Vogue. Teen Vogue. Yes. Not Teen Challenge. <laughs> teen Vogue is pushing some crazy sex. I saw I saw a clip the other day. They were pushing like, um, you know, uh, sodomy for kids a yeah. long time ago. Yeah, but then recently that. they came up with some more stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you got them. Then you got the government. You know, I mean, we've, we've I'm not going to say the names because I ain't trying to die. Mm-hmm. But there's been people in government that have been caught smuggling kids mm-hmm. from countries in young kids for pedophilia and all this stuff. So when you look all the way, across, uh, then you got Jeffrey Epstein, obviously. Mm-hmm. And you know, all these like big name people that government people that are going to this Island, these elites and all this stuff. So when you look at across the board, it's not just like, this is why I didn't want to target it all on like, you know, West Hollywood or, yeah. or San Francisco. It's like government. Mm-hmm. San Francisco, Hollywood. I mean, they, I mean, you go to different places. I mean, yeah. every city has their their area, but it's it's bigger than these little areas. You know, like you know, it's bigger than these areas. We're talking like por- Pornhub. I mean, if yes. you look up the the numbers of Pornhub, you're talking about like m- like millions of downloads, like an hour mm-hmm. or something or more. It's it's crazy, but. Yes, with with the lust and the sex and the perversion and all that stuff. Yes, it's it's the world at large is is yeah. you know God is we're praying that God will have His grace, and even just on America right now with all the the crazy stuff that's going on with the elections and the, I mean there's just a lot of crazy stuff. But God, there's a lot of Christians praying. Yeah. And uh, God is God. He knew this was going to happen, and he's he's the judge, and he is he raises up kings and brings them down. You know, yeah. he's the God in heaven over all things, for sure. Okay, so I'm going to give the number out: triple eight five six four six one seven three, triple eight five six four six one seven three. So when I woke up from my sugar coma, no, uh, actually I didn't eat any sweets today. But when I woke up from my In and Out burger today, animal I fries. T- I took. I always take a nap before I come out here. You know, uh-huh. if you have a long day, I was moving all day. So I woke up and I was flipping through my phone and I came across. My, I was flipping through my social media on Instagram and I came across James Cadiz. You all know James Cadiz. He's on this particular station. Um, teaches, and he's at Calvary Chapel Signal Hill. And he's listening right now. So what up, James? Um, and he had this video, and he was basically talking about uh, this news article I saw a couple of days ago that came out. It was what's the guy's name? The Asian dude that um, was running for president. Yeah, let me let me pick it up right now. I got it right here. Anyway, I'll tell you why he pulls up the name. This guy came out in a Andrew Yang, huh? Andrew Yang. Yeah. So anyway, he came out in the news article, and he was talking about COVID, and he was. He was getting all kinds of backlash because he did some tweets. Um, and actually, do you have the tweets? Yeah. Go ahead and read them. And if you watch James Cadiz's uh, thing, he did bring these up. And these are some of the things that he said. Andrew Yang said, Is there a way for someone to easily show that they have been vaccinated, like a barcode that they can download to their phone? There ought to be, he's saying. Next tweet. Tough to have mass gatherings like concerts or ball games without either mass adoption of the vaccine or or a means of signaling. I've been tested at a photo shoot or interview and gotten a bracelet showing I was negative. Then we could interact more freely. So he's kind of putting this stuff out there. Like Ryan said, he's in politics. If you see him, he probably has a million so followers. He was up in the running early stages of the presidency uh, back in the day. Um, but as you hear the things that he is saying, it's just kind of like rattling off what he would perceive as being solutions to this problem. And for uh, James brought it up because knowing the Bible, your your antenna just goes up. It's like, wow, like how, how we wonder, like how things could like fall into place uh, biblically. How could people just fall in line and take a mark? 
And here we see a, a situation that could be very much ripe for it. So it causes us to question just this reality, whether this happens in the near future or whatnot, the, the groundwork's already there. It's been there, and we just see how easily uh, people that can, can be controlled. So let me do this. Let me bring it back a step. So just so we can make sure people are grasping what we're saying. James basically went on to talk about the verse in Revelations when it talks about no one will be able to buy or sell. We're talking about the Antichrist now. Yeah. And I, and I love talking about the Antichrist and the end times and all this stuff. I, I, I love... Bible prophecy. I love studying it. And, and James was kind of hitting on, basically just kind of hit on it, you know, of how it relates to Bible prophecy. Now, with that said, you know, this guy was saying, first of all, before, before, I mean, years ago, we would say, how in the heck would any, well, this is what James says before he was saying, how would, before this all happened, before this whole COVID thing, he goes, he was saying, you know, we used to think, how in the heck would people bow down and just submit to getting a, a plant, a, a chip in their forehead or in their hand, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now, what this guy just said, and I used to think the same way, like, how they could even get people to even submit to do something like that? There's no way. Well, now, what this guy, what's so interesting about what this guy said, he brought up this whole logical, smart, amazing idea Saying and and like let's think realistically. Okay, if COVID, which I have different, I I, I think it's a whole you know, mm -hmm. I think it's a whole pandemic and everything. You know, it it is real. It does exist. People get it. People get sick. I understand all that, but there's there's more to it. But what I'm saying is, what happened is this guy is saying, hey, how are we going to keep track of everyone to make sure that they got the shot right, the injection because. You know, I'm not getting no injection. I can tell you that right now. My kids, my wife, my family, we ain't getting no shot. We're just going to be healthy. We're going to eat healthy foods. We're going to exercise. We're going to eat vitamins. And we're going we're gonna to be healthy. And, you know, the survival rate is 90, not, what is it, 98.9% rate or something like that. So anyway, with all that said, what he was saying is there's going to be people that aren't going to want to get the injection. Like that Texas doctor. You see that? Yes. I've seen it. Yes. <laughs> I've seen it. Okay. With that said, um, he's like, it would just be smart for us to get the, you know, whoever gets the injection, it should have some little barcode in it. Mm -hmm. So it could tag to your computer or to your phone, or they could like, you know, do a reading to know that you actually got the injection, right? Mm -hmm. So that's an easy way. So if you're at a concert, you know, people are saying you'll never go back to normal. And this is like, you know, what, what one side is saying. And, to get back to normal, they could just say, hey, let's make things easy. Whoever gets the codes, then you could go to these concerts or to work at the to work at the this job, you gotta get a bar, you know, you gotta get the injection. And the best way to do it is that we have a reading of it. It totally makes sense. Yeah. Now, a lot of people, smart people, are like, I'm not putting no chip in me. Like, what the heck's in the chips? What the heck's in the vaccine? What the heck? Right? So no one wants to be monitored or anything like that because we're Americans and that's what freedom is. It's about being free from having to do anything. But there's a lot of people that are thinking it's also a great idea. Yeah. Is to go, yeah, because then we don't have to worry about getting COVID and we know who's safe and it's a way to control. So anyway, with all that said, going back to Bible prophecy... We would have never thought in a million years, how are people going to do this? Well, people are in fear. People are scared. And they think it's a it's a great idea to do that. So now we can totally see this lining up. People are in line to get the injection. I heard rich Californians are trying to pay $25,000 to cut in line. Did you read that article? No, I didn't read that. Yeah, that, I just read that today. And, so. and just to put things in context, too, the reference that Ryan's talking about right now and what James spoke about is from the book of Revelation, chapter 13. And this is what it says in verse 16. It says, he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their That's foreheads it. and no. that no and one may buy in or sell too, except the reference one that Ryan has talking the mark about right now or the name of the James beast spoke about or the number of, the of his revelation name. Here chapter is wisdom. 13. Let him and who has understanding says, calculate 16, the number of the beast. He causes the all of both men, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead.
the Antichrist is going to rise up. So that Ryan is talking the mark, about right now. He's going to name the name of Jesus or the number of Revelation here chapter is wisdom, 13. He's Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the Bible. He causes all both men, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their left. A statue of himself in there, and he's going to say, Worship me. The Jews are going to realize that he is not the Messiah. All hell is going to break out. and during. But before that happens, the church is going to get raptured. So if you're a Christian, and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, a true relationship, then you will get raptured. You won't see this stuff. But during that time, that's when he's going to implement the mark. And you, everyone is going to have to get the mark to live. But once you get that mark, you're going to be damned to hell. And it's better to die than to get that mark because death in hell is eternal. And it's forever and ever and ever. So don't get the mark. And what's even better is just fall in love with Jesus, yes. have a relationship with God, and when the rapture comes, you'll be caught up in a moment, a twinkle of eye, it's a done deal, and you won't have to worry about getting beheaded, dying, being like Red Dawn and hiding in the mountains, <laughs> camping, any of that stuff. You know, w one last thing on this is that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, if you don't know it, read it. It speaks about the Antichrist as well. And as Ryan says, the Antichrist is going to be revealed when the church is taken out of the way. That's an important thing to have in concept. What I read in Revelation chapter 13, uh, that is speaking of the tribulation period. We believe that we as a church are going to be out, out of the rapture. In the book of Revelation chapter 6 through 18, all speak about that tribulation uh, time, But in 2 Thessalonians, it talks about the coming of the lawless one who is Satan, and he is going to, by all power and signs and lying wonders, he is going to deceive many because they did not receive the love of the truth. It's a battle that we are seeing. It's a battle of truth that we are seeing right now. And I truly believe this. The reason why people, Ryan, are going to fall for this is because people have so less Bible knowledge than ever before. They, there's so many people that don't even know who Christ is, who Jesus is. And so they are going to, it's going to be spun, like you were saying, like it's a good thing. Oh man, I'll be able to go back to conscience. I'll be able to go do this and that. And people are going to fall for it, I, I believe, very easily. They're already going to fall for it. I told you this girl that was helping us, uh, she was a hostess or a waitress. Um, I go, hey, so what do you think about the whole virus thing and, and, and getting a, a vaccine? vaccine yeah. She goes, if my college tells me, I'll get it. I'm like, where are you going? Like some, you know, yeah. Stanford. Yeah. She's like, no community college. I'm like, oh my goodness gracious, people are ready for it. Believe me. So anyway, um, and then you know, I heard that you have to get. Uh, someone else said in the news, Basel just hit me up, that in the news it says that you, you're going to have to get vaccinated to work, as well to be in the job or whatever. So there's there's going to be different jobs that are going to enforce those things. There's going to be a lot of. You know, all the different laws and requirements and insurance things kind of power in in the beginning of the year. Many agencies and companies are looking into You know, when I got scared is when I saw that Texas doctor. When they were going. The one when, that passed out? No, the, no, the Texas oh, doctor, the when one. they went to inject him. Huh? But the, the, the needle, no, the needle was out. But the, the thing that pushes it in, the pusher, was all the way down. So they never injected yeah, yeah, him. Did I, you ever I, see that? Yeah, I saw that one. The one that was fake. Well, yeah, the fake one. <laughs> I was like, nope. <laughs> Not today. Uh, doctors aren't even trying to get it. Okay, so let's uh, blow. Uh, let's see. Um, we got man. We got a bunch of calls. So yeah, let's go ahead and grab this. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, this is what I wanted to say actually. So there'll be a great deception during those days in the last days, right? Yeah, correct. Now, if you can't walk with Jesus now, <laughs> when the Holy Spirit is here on earth, drawing all man to Himself, do you think that you're gonna? not be deceived it says even the elect will be deceived mm. you good luck yeah. you know what i'm saying like i'm gonna give my life to jesus i'm gonna go do what i, I want to live my life for myself now and then later on i'm gonna give my life to jesus yeah which is insanity like the thought process is insanity and just to add on to it i mean just think of what it says in revelation not being able to buy eat food all that stuff look what happened when people thought that well you know obviously everything was getting locked down and then boom all the stores were like jam-packed Imagine people think about themselves. That's the number one thing people think about. They think about themselves, think about their family. I need food. I need this. And if you're saying, I need to have this, otherwise my family's not going to be able to eat, people will bow down to those kind of things very easily, especially if they don't have this perspective. Yep. Let's go ahead and grab, uh, let's go ahead and grab uh, this one with Robert. 
We're going to take Robert in San Diego. What's up, man? How you doing tonight? I'm okay. How are you? Doing good, dude. What's your question? My question is how to overcome the bondage of pornography. That, that is a great question. That is a very common question and a very real question and a, and a real problem with a lot of, of not only men, but women. So first of all, I just want to say you're not alone. Um, it's a serious thing, and um, there is a way to overcome. It's going to be uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, but I don't want to just say that. I want to give you actually life application, and we want to give you some scriptures to back it up. Um, two questions for you. First of all, are you married? Or are you single? No. Yes. You're single. Single. Okay. Got it. Right. So I get it. You're single. And hey, let's face it. You're a man. You see some girls. And um, pornography is, uh, is, 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 is a thing to do, basically. Mm -hmm. So look at man. This is the deal. Anyone that watches porn feels dirty after, um, I mean, if you, this is for Christians, obviously. You feel guilty, you feel dirty, you feel ashamed, you feel like you, God doesn't love you. It's like all these thoughts, and these are all from Satan, you know? These are all the sins, these are all the, the thoughts that Satan rushes in right after uh, you get done watching it, and you get condemned, because Satan is the condemner. So, pornography obviously is, is sin, and it controls and it destroys our life. And if you do want to quit, the verse that, that really did it for me was when Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you got to turn from your selfish ways, pick up your cross and follow me. And you got to literally kill your body appetites. You need to, um, if you aren't human, if it's not humanly possible for you not to go to it on your phone or your laptop or wherever you're watching this stuff, then the first life application thing you need to do is you need to get rid of your internet. I know that may sound crazy, but the question is, do you really want to stop watching pornography? You literally got to cut the power from wherever you're watching it from. And what will happen is it's almost like, you know, like sugar addiction. You know, sugar, when you eat sugar, it's addicting. Yes. Like I noticed when I went on that, they started eating ice cream and cakes and all this stuff. Your body, you like want you, you want more. Yes. And you, like I literally, I, I've been trying to wean myself off sugar. But what happens is, and, and this is, but this is real. Sugar is truly an addictive thing, uh, just like pornography. But what happens is, is when you stop eating the sugar, you stop watching the stop porn. What happens is you stop craving it. Those cravings go away. And when the devil comes knocking at night, because he will, that's when he shows up for pornography. When you're tired, you're at night in your room, then you need to just turn the Bible app on or you need to put worship on or you got to do something to combat those thoughts. But I guarantee you over time, if you are in the scriptures and you're, you're, you're reading and you're praying and you're asking God, you can overcome. It's been six years for me or, or lo I don't know, wait, longer. No, years like, no, like 12 years. Yeah. 12 years since I got strung out on pornography. But God can do it. Just ask him to forgive you. Ask him to fill you with the spirit and um, unplug that power, man. And, and, and another thing, too, is you get those accountability apps. And uh, that could basically uh, help you out there. So, Robert, thank you for calling in. I hope that uh, helped you. And uh, we're going to be going to break here in a couple minutes. So, listen, you guys, my name is Ryan Reese. Um, I'm the co-founder of the Whosoever's Movement. I got Sean McKeon in studio, from uh, pastor from Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar. Go to the whosoevers.com. Uh, we, uh, we tour. We have movies. We do films with our tours. We bring the gospel to the high schools, to the skate parks, the parks. We're improvising right now, but we're still getting in front of thousands of students. We haven't stopped since the pandemic, and we're going to continue. We're going to be back right after the break. More of The Ryan Reese Show. Coming up, post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook.
now back, back, back to the Ryan Reese Show. All right. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take this call. Let's take some more calls. We got questions. We got a lot of questions and a lot of calls. So let's try and like hammer through this. All right. Here we go. Let's, let's, let's do give this. Give the number again. Chief. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, what is it? 888 I'm going to go right. slow. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take this call. Triple eight. Let's take some more calls. Five, we questions. six, four, We got four, a lot of questions and a lot six, of calls. So let's one, try and like hammer seven, through this. Three. All right, here Hit we go. Us let's, up. let's do this. Oh, yeah. Go Live. ahead. Uh, what is it? Triple Grace eight from Puena, five, six, Park. How are you doing tonight? Seven, 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 three. Three. Hi, guys. Five, seven, seven. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying right. thank so you anyway, guys uh, for doing all that you did on the radio show. Five, and, um, six, um, four, 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 six, and for talking about, you know, real things and not watering anything down. And my question tonight is how do we live, like, the full um, abundant life that Jesus wanted us to live because I feel like um, personally in my own life, I'm just like um, living kind of like a mediocre Christianity and I just feel completely drained and um, like I'm not doing anything, I guess. Well, okay. That's an awesome question, by the way, Grace, right on. Um, Are you doing anything? Like, are you, are you plugged in, not going to church, you, I know you're going to church, but are you doing anything? Are you plugged into any kind of like ministry? And when I say that, like, are you um like volunteering or in active ministry at all? Um, not in my church because, and I've wanted to, um, but my mom, um, she, cause I'm only 14, so she obviously oh. like drives me to church and stuff. Yeah. So, um, uh, she works on Sundays, um, and she can't really. So like we don't go to the um, the morning services all the time. Yeah. We go to Calvary Chapel Downey. Yeah. Um, so we usually go at the night services, and yeah. I guess I just like never got around. All right, check it to out. Because we don't go in the morning. I got an idea. Yeah. Since you're 14, so mm-hmm. the Whosoever's is about to uh, we're about to uh, do several outreaches here in California. I don't, yeah, if you follow the movement, you see we've been doing skate park tours all over uh, like Montana, Florida, Idaho. Have you seen that? Yeah. So we're going to hit California here shortly in the next month. And uh, it's on the weekends. So why don't you come out and uh, connect with us and get involved and uh, come volunteer with us at the skate parks? That would be so awesome. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, I look up to you guys so, so much. Dude, so that, that would just. Let's do it. You got to get, get active. You got to read the Bible. You got to yeah. know what it says. And uh, mm-hmm. then you got to go live it out. So why don't you uh, shoot us an email at the whosoever's. Go to the whosoever's.com. Um, or you mm-hmm. can go straight to the email address, info at the whosoever's.com. Shoot an email. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell your grace from the radio show. And the guy that's actually going to get the email, he's actually in the studio on the other side of the window. So he hears us now. He'll be looking out for your email. His name's Lucas. And we'll give you the information and come out. To the skate parks, and we have some. We also have other junior high and high school students, and um, even like older people that help out with us. We have all ages. We're, we're, you know, we work with everybody. But yeah, that will get you active and going. But um, I do a Bible study. It's called. It's on. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's called. Uh, shoot, I can't even think about it. It's about the spirit led life. It might even be called Spirit Led Life or something. I, I gotta look it up. I'll 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 try and look it up and, and find it. But um it just talks about the move and the power of the Holy Spirit and, and how to uh to live that that life that you were uh created for. Oh, it's called the detour route. Look it up. Ryan Reese detour route. And uh okay. it'll it'll uh it'll talk about uh, that spirit led life that you need to uh to live so that's it so let's uh let's connect let's get on some uh, get to some events with us and we'll get you plugged in and get you activated in ministry it'd be epic okay thank you guys so much all right, all right grace, take, take it care. easy grace you know and that goes for any other people that are listening any people that want to get active in ministry hit us up come out come out and get uh busy you know the the skate parks are open um, we're able to still do ministry, and we're getting hundreds of people showing up. I mean, dude, we're at Montana. We like 500 people show up at the skate park. I mean, we could be averaging like 300 people at a park. You know, that could be like a lunch assembly. 
You know, piggybacking off her question, I know she's a, a young girl, 14 years you know, old, amazing, the l- love the open. question. Desire uh, to be used by God. What I would we're say is, I like that how she up. actually I mean, was able to acknowledge dude, herself. Too. Like, like I don't want to be mediocre. I don't want to just go I mean, through the motions. Because be like a lot of times, it's park, easy you know? like, to go through the motions. Like, just go to church. Just do what you think is right to do um, by different standards. But I would always encourage you to ask, why do you do what you do? Like, why do you pray? Why do you read? Why do you go to church? All those things are important. Uh, but don't just let it be a routine thing. Like And as Ryan shared, the way that you're able to make all of those things be important and be powerful and being able to be used by God is a life that is led by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, use me. And one of the questions, Ryan, that came up that I think that we could piggyback this is how is it, this came from one of the, uh, from online and social media, how is it that we can become Christ-like influence while we ourselves are sinful beings? And I think that this is a hang-up for a lot of people, too, sometimes. They look at themselves like, dude, I'm a mess. I'm a wreck. Like, how could God use me? And if you look, we have so many examples from the Bible and then even our own lives. Like, Paul was a man that was throwing Christians into prison. He was a bad man as far as towards the Christian faith. And Paul also had this realization of himself. And I believe in 1 Timothy, he says, I was the chief of all sinners. Look, God had grace on me. And I could have been wiped out, but now I'm able to share with other people about God's grace. And he he can use me. Paul never like um, downplayed the reality of like he had a sinful background. He was a sinful man that daily has to reckon that old man to be dead. And the same is true for Ryan. The same is true for me. Same is true for Rawl and anybody that is doing ministry. That old nature is there. You got to reckon that old man to be dead. And then God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, empowers us to impact people. God doesn't just use perfect people. Nobody's perfect here. And so never get that hang up that um, God can't use you because you're not this perfect cookie cutter Christian. You know what I'm saying, Ryan? Yeah. uh, God uses donkeys. (laughs) Um, Let's just just simplify it. (laughs) God uses donkeys. Uh, There's that story in the Bible of him actually using an actual donkey to do as well. If God could actually use a donkey He could use me because I am a donkey sometimes. Uh, We all are. And that's the whole thing is we do. We we are sinners. You know, we're sanctified. We're forgiven. God has transformed us. But at the end of the day, we're, you know, we're sinners. And uh, if we're not, if we say we're not, we're liars. You know what I mean? And that's the bottom line. And it's just God's grace. And that's it. We got that's the condemnation that Satan loves to trip people up. Dude, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that are like, oh, I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm this. I'm like, you're not. You're not good enough. None of us are good enough. God's good. And if God's called you, he's going to get you through it. And guess what? You're going to make mistakes. You're going to trip. You're going to fall. You're going to mess up and sin. I'm not saying you're going to go out and sleep around, sleep on your wife or something. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, you know, that's a lot of commitment <laughs> yeah. to do and planning. But I'm saying like, you know, we, we mess up here and there. We're not we're not um we're not saints. I mean we are saints, but not no, perfect. No, no, no perfect. We're not perfect. Uh I want to get back to that girl Grace. Um I I gave you the wrong one. It's uh if you look up on YouTube, it's called Ryan Reese, The Good Life. That's about the, the good spirit led life. life. It's uh John ten uh verses one to twenty one. And then also the other one that will get you fired up is uh, Ryan Reese, Be Great. It's uh, Matthew 3, uh, verse 1 to 12. So those are those are two um, studies I did that will get you fired up to do evangelism and live that spirit led life. Okay. There was a question. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just throw this plug out because um, I did a post recently with my dad. I got uh, that circled actually. Reviewing my book. I um, saw that. Uh, ha- did he read it actually? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so listeners, I have a book coming out in 2020. I wrote a book uh, during the pandemic, and it's called "Kill the Noise: Finding Meaning Above the Madness." And then it just goes on to say my name, co-founder of the Whosoever Movement. And anyway, long story short, it's a, it's a journey. It's not, um, it's not like, it's not just like my testimony 
Um, it's actually the whole book. I've had some of, a lot of my friends read the book, and it's actually a lot of stuff they don't even know. There's so much stuff that's in there that I have not ever said from stage or anything like that. I wanted the book to be completely different. It's not my story. Um, the first two chapters is like a, a segment of my life, but it's a lot of stuff that you've never even talked about of my life in, in my testimony when I spoke or did my am second or anything. Yeah. So it's all fresh. It's all new. Yeah. That I have not ever talked said about how I got stage or anything and then it like goes that. I wanted the book to be completely what's different. It's not my story. What is um, sin? The first two chapters you is know, like who's a, the whole segment of my life. Um, but it's a lot of stuff uh, that you've never who even is talked Jesus? about of my life in, um, in my testimony. When I yeah, I'll just need, I'll just re, uh, read the chapters. Go for it. So the, this is the chapters. First chapter: Let the good times roll. Chapter two: Losing control. Chapter three: Crossroads. Chapter four: Punk rock Jesus. Chapter 5, Identity Crisis. Chapter 6, Shiny Objects. Chapter 7, Destroy All Gods. Chapter 8, God Signs in the Storms. Chapter 9, Live in the Impossible. Chapter 10, No Posers. Mm -hmm. So basically, in a nutshell, uh, Let the Good Times Roll is me going out, growing up, and just sinning and letting the good times roll. Losing control is when I freaking lose control. The drugs take control, and I give my life to Jesus. Crossroads is when I'm at that place and I have to decide, am I going to follow Christ? Am I going to quit my porn addiction? Am I going to stop drugs and alcohol, stop sleeping with chicks? And am I, am I going to deny myself? Punk rock Jesus is how Jesus came in and saved a dirty sinner like me and who Jesus was in the Bible. And he was against the religious system. He was against people ripping God's people off. He was a man. He was the Savior. He came to help the poor. He came to preach the gospel. He came to help people, heal people, cast out demons, and to show people what a relationship looked like with the God of the universe. Shiny objects is what Satan likes to throw in front of us after we give our life to Christ. And he likes to throw those shiny objects in front of us to bring us back to pornography, to bring us back to drugs, to lie, to cheat, to cheat on our wife. Shiny objects. Then destroy all gods is us fighting the shiny objects and destroying all the stuff that will destroy us in our life. Then you have God signs in the storms. That's I'm going to just uh, keep that as is. I'll let you figure that out. It's all God doing miracles uh, when you pray and him coming through at the at the 11th hour sometimes. And then uh, living the impossible is just basically living that spirit-led life. And then no posers is basically being like Mary and Martha. You know, they were one was a worker bee and then one was a worshiper. But the whole thing is you want to be both. You want to work for Jesus. You want to be love the Great Commission, but you want to be a worshiper at the same time. And no posers is basically you don't want to be Judas. He was the biggest poser in the Bible. Yeah, I think it's going to be dope. I think it's going to be amazing. You read it? Yeah, yeah. I, and that's what I was going to say. I have had the Unlike your dad, no. Uh, <laughs> hey, I just gave him the book, okay? So he has to read it. <laughs> um, no, I have actually read I've actually read it a couple times just in, in preparation for everything. And like Ryan says, you know, some of you guys maybe have heard his story, but what he does on there, and I know a lot of his story as well, but there's perspective that he adds on to it. That it could really only be from his own perspective of kind of, kind of uh, giving a little bit more detail. And like Ryan was saying, it kind of highlights and kind of goes through his life and his transformation, those first couple chapters. But also it takes you on a, a journey that kind of breaks down this this Christian light, this journey, that all the things that you battle with, like the pulls of this world, but also being used by God. It talks about the por- uh, overcoming pornography. All of these things that probably you or somebody in your life is going through in the journey. And then it really has everything for everyone. It has those that are maybe you don't even know God. If somebody that's not even down with a relationship with God, I think it could impact them. For somebody that is uh, just starting to walk with God, I will encourage them. Also, somebody that's kind of been in the mix. Maybe they are kind of um, going through the motions of the Christian faith. Maybe it will encourage you to activate your faith. And also maybe for those seasoned people as well as you, it might inspire you. And so what it has in it as well is it has important teachings along the way of like sin, salvation, the work of the Holy Spirit. And it has a very important biblical impact that I think is going to be legit. So you're going to be hearing a lot about it in the next months. As Ryan said, it's going to be released next year in 2021. You're going to want to grab it for sure, and you're going to be hearing a lot of things about it. But like Ryan was saying, it came out pretty legit. Yeah. Um, 
the book, the way I wanted to write it is so it was a, it's like it's a discipleship book. It's basically right. to answer all those questions of, you know, people that are seasoned in the faith, you know, new believers, not a believer. Um, it, it, addre- it addresses everything. It's, it's people aren't going to expect what's in it. And, and it's cool because when you're sitting um, down I mean, there's a lot of like, I'm, I'm teaching the Bible in it too. It's mm-hmm. like, there's like, we're, we're teaching, there's funny stories, there's different perspectives and a lot, a lot of life application stuff um, to, to get people in their faith going, you know, to act, basically activated. But uh, the whole thing with uh, that book is that I had time to sit down and actually really put my thoughts together. Cause when you're out and you're, you're teaching the Bible and you're speaking, um, you know, I don't, I don't write my studies down. Like I, when I, when I put Bibles, the I put my little notes in my, in my Bible mm-hmm. and I teach the, I'm teaching the scripture and stuff of what's going on when I do the Bible studies, I teach the Bible, but this actually getting to sit down and really focus on certain areas and really expand on certain perspectives and things. That's what was, that's what's cool about the book. It's, 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 it's different, you know? So anyway, it's coming out. It's on, um, it'll be at, uh, it comes out in May, uh, May 2000, May 11th, I think, 2021. But right now, if you look at um, Amazon, it's up there. It's Kill the Noise, Ryan Reese. Just look at my name. It's on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. Uh, I don't know. It's like on five other, the the other um, platforms, book platforms. Okay. Um, it's with uh, Hachette Publishing, and so and it's out there being advertised right it, now. It's there now. You could pre-order it. Oh, it's nice. it's up there. It's already up there. It exists, and um, I didn't even know it was up there. I was actually looking for the Whosoever's <laughs> photo the other day for for some project I was working on. I was googling, and the book came up. Oh, legit. Yeah, it, it surprised me. So anyway, it's up there, and um, it's gonna be. So something good happened in 2020. You're able to get that book dialed in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got the book done and released. So, some a lot of good stuff happened in 2020. We got some, we got a new movie being edited right now for our Montana tour, and we have an Idaho film that's going to be coming out. So, we've been working; it's been happening. When are those I, coming I, out, Ryan? I know what you're saying, though. Uh, we are waiting. Soon, hopefully soon. Hopefully in the next month. All right, let's grab some more calls. Here we go. Let's see. Um, you do a lot of counseling, Sean, with marriage. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this with Johnny in California. How you doing tonight, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Do can you well. hear me? Yes, we can hear you hey. great. Hey, thank you so much for taking the call. Yeah, so um, um, me and my wife, uh, we've been separated for about nine months. Mm. And um, we have three little ones. Yeah. So right now... Uh, you know, like everything's been okay. We just been, um, you know, uh, taking care of the kids and you know switching back and forth one week here, one week there. Yeah. And so now um, I understand that you know my kids they need a stable place because I could kind of see how it's affecting them at this time. So just uh, last week I um, delivered my kids over to her and then. Uh, some lady steps out of the car and she hands me these papers. So I, I kind of already figured what it, what it was. Mm-hmm. And so at this time, it, it's pretty much um, child custody. It's a summons letter for child custody. So I have uh, two set dates that I need to attend. And then, so right now I'm, I'm pretty much at a loss. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know what to do. You know, I mean, I, I have spoken to my parents and, um, you know, all the relatives and pretty much told me to go seek uh, guidance from a, a lawyer. Mm-hmm. So the reason why I'm calling is, you know, if, just to see if you guys have any, uh, you know, a reference that I can go to. Because I, I, I kind of, I, I want, um, you know, a say this because for us you know our main thing is just kind of breaking down stuff from a biblical perspective and i think that's the most important thing that we can give you johnny uh not so much the attorney aspect but like do you want this marriage to be fixed that's the question yeah i mean i i definitely do but um (laughs) 
at this time, it's just uh, I would it's, say it's that not let, me let, that let me, doesn't let me, want it. Okay, let, let me let me say this, Johnny. What, what I I've done a lot of counseling on marriage over the years, and it all comes down to this. What it, you guys have been separated for nine months. That's a very long time. And in any relationship and marriage, there has to be a vision. There has to be a goal. You just don't separate for long periods of time and try to and get used to that lifestyle. And just like, let's see if we still like each other. Let's see if we're going. This is going to work out with no vision. Um, are you a believer, Johnny? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to do things biblically, number one, in separation, it should be the Bible speaks of only separation for given over to prayer like let, let god work in our marriage like does god do a miracle obviously things have gotten off the rails but we're going to seek the lord and ask him for guidance not for the people and our friends and family around us we're going to seek the lord and then by doing that you're going to give god an opportunity to move now a lot of times like you were saying maybe she's not feeling it maybe she just don't want to fix it and you also have to realize like do you want it do you want this to be fixed? And if, if if that's your heart, if you care for her, if you love her, you got to stand in the gap. You got to pray. You have to seek the Lord before you get into all the different, whether it comes to a divorce thing next and all those kind of things. You really want to seek God's guidance. And so what I would say, more importantly, Johnny, what we could give you, we'll put you on hold. If you want to talk to a pastor, myself or somebody, I could get you dialed in, kind of break this down with a little bit more detail and give you encouragement on that level so you because before you make decisions on attorneys and before you make decisions that are going to really impact and affect you you want to make sure that you're getting the counsel that comes from God's word and God's truth on these decisions Johnny because these are major things obviously we're in a very tough time right now you have three children I pray that God will restore your marriage a lot of battles there but uh, we're going to put you on hold and we're going to get your contact information and we're going to get back to you Johnny okay okay all right Thank you. Come from home. Thank you, Johnny. There we go. Yeah, marriages are always being destroyed. Go ahead. I think I misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I thought they they were separated mm -hmm. for a time, and that they were doing something with the court just to work on the custody while they're separated. They're, I didn't. Was it a divorce? No. So no, they were separated. Because I'm not life. trying to give attorneys out for people to get divorced. No, just exactly. To be clear. Exactly. I thought it was like they no, were no, just he, separated, and they were trying the to. The attorney was for a child custody thing. Right. And so. Yeah, yeah. That, that's something else. Uh, for okay. us, we just want to speak on the biblical aspect, yeah. encouragement for, because exactly. that, that you need God's wisdom before you start getting influenced by friends, family, yeah. attorneys, all that kind of stuff. What does God want you to do? Yeah. And, and if you're not seeking God's well, direction. Well, also, too, it's if you do get an attorney, you want a Christian attorney because they're going to before they're going to try to get everything focused and pray and make sure. Exactly. You stay with the your spouse and the whole thing. So exactly. That's the whole goal is that people stay together. Yes. And and work this out. So, yes, I thought I heard something different. Um, OK, so we have I think we have a few minutes left, I believe. uh two minutes or something like that one of the calls just dropped 90 seconds left okay cool so with that said um here let's see what's the fuss about december 21st why are people saying the rapture no one knows the time or the hour of the rapture so it's my dad's birthday that's all i'm thinking about when people <laughs> when people give out dates and like that yeah. just just stay chill out man oh here's another one is the end near i think we talked about that no one earlier. knows the time or the hour yeah Obviously, there are signs that are showing that we are living in very incredible times. Nobody can deny that. This is 2020. I can't believe Christmas is right around the corner. We do pray that God will just bless you guys during this time of Christmas and be praying for the new year that God will do great things. Oh, there's some good questions that I just came across, but we're going to have to wait till next weekend for this one. All right. Well, we have a minute left. So. We love you guys. Thank you for uh, tuning in to the radio show. We're here every Saturday night um, taking live calls and um, different guests, live interviews. If you want to hear past shows, you can find us on YouTube, um, iHeartRadio, uh, the Whosoever's website, our app, the Whosoever's app, um, Vimeo. I mean, pretty much any platform, any, any streaming platform. Um, that one what's that other iCloud or not iCloud uh SoundCloud, SoundCloud. All, and Spotify and all those they're all we're on all of them go to the whosoever's.com follow us on Instagram 
And uh, we'll talk to you guys next Saturday night. Merry Christmas, guys. Peace. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday for The Ryan Reese Show.